Okay, so this is another problem for finding reactions of a simply supported system. So here we want to determine the magnitude T of the tension in the supporting cable and the magnitude of the force at pin A for the jib crane shown. The beam AB is a standard 0.5 meter I-beam with a massive 95 kilograms per meter of length. Okay, so there's quite a bit going on that we're going to have to decipher. The first thing is, again, this, this loading is a snapshot in time. If this were to be moving, it would be a dynamic loading that would be ever-changing. Um, and then we could stop and take pictures and look at the static forces caused. And just looking at, if we wanted to look at the moments about A, there's going to be a big difference between this over here at B, especially if there's a giant load on it, and this over here at A. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind with statics is we are literally looking at a snapshot in time of the force configuration, okay? The other thing is, is we need to take into account this one has a mass. So we're going to need to take into account this beam, um, the weight of the beam. And a lot of times, like the last two examples, we just we kind of ignored the self-weight. So when I draw a free body diagram, I'm also going to note that point B is offset, you know, it's offset from the centroid and my free body diagram kind of goes through that centroid. So I need to make sure that I draw a free body diagram that includes that offset. So here at A, I have a pin connection, AX, AY, okay. Then I have this force coming down of 10 kilonewtons and I have this tension cable, which again, it's a two force cable. The force is running along the direction of this line. If we were to find the reactions, if we are pulling down in tension, the reactions would have to be pulling up equal and opposite. Um, and because it's a two force member, I can break down okay, the components of this tension cable. So I can call the Y component tension in my cable at B, sine 25 degrees. And I can look at the X component, and I can call it tension A. Oops, not tension A, we're still at B. Okay, tension at B. Cosine 25. And we can look at our distances. Um, here is 1.5 meters. Okay, and I note that the whole beam is 5 meters long, but my pin at A is actually offset slightly. Um, and it is set at 0.12 meters. So if I'm looking at this distance from A to where we have the 10 kilonewtons hanging, it's going to be 5 meters minus the 1.5 minus 0.12 meters. And that's going to give us the actual distance from the pin at A to the 10 kilonewtons. Okay. The other thing I need to take into account is I have this mass. So I need to look at the weight of this beam. So if it is 95 kilograms per meter, and I need the, the force of this beam, then I can multiply it by 5 meters and get rid of my units of meters and I'm left with 95 times 5, 475 kilograms. And I would say as in statics and when you follow on in strengths, it's not so much about memorizing a formula. How do I how do I get rid of the mass? How do I make it into force? It's look at your units. If this is kilogram per meter and I need it to be in kilograms, then I can see that it's five meters over one. Okay. Um, and kilograms is mass, and on Earth, where we are, we can multiply it by 9.81 meters per second squared, and we can get the force of 4,659.75 newtons. Kilogram meter per second squared is newtons. But when I look here, okay, this force is in kilonewtons. So before I put it on my picture, I want to make sure I'm in the same units. 4.66 kilonewtons. Okay. And if I want to represent on this five, fart, five meter beam, 
where the mass would be located, where is the center of gravity? Okay, where would the center of gravity be? Well, it's symmetric. So I'm going to put this right here in the middle, 4.66 kilonewtons. And if the whole beam is 5 meters, okay, the whole beam is 5 meters, then I can recognize we are 2.5 meters over from the end of the beam. However, we have this little 0.12 meters, okay, that's coming back to A. So the distance from the centroid to A is 2.5 minus 0.12 meters. And this is where your free body diagram, um, the more detail you can put on the free body diagram, the less work you have to do when you're setting up your equations. Because you can already see all of your distances, you know exactly where your forces are. So I have an unknown tension, and it's not two unknowns because I know how the x and y are related as a function of the tension. So I have one unknown, two unknowns, three unknowns. I have three unknowns in this problem. So we could start with summing forces x. And if I sum forces x, I'm going to have ax and then the x component of my tension cable. Well, that's two unknowns in one equation. That is not super helpful. I could sum forces y. Unknown AY, I know this, I know this, oh gosh, unknown force in the tension cable. So starting with summing forces X and Y is not very helpful. The other thing to note is I can have an X component at this pin, and I don't, when I'm looking at this whole system, I don't have an X applied force, but once I put in this two force cable that has both a Y and X component, I do have an X component in my system that needs to be counteracted by the pin at A. Okay, so if this cable is in tension, that means it's pulling down from the wall. And if it's pulling down from the wall, the reaction up here has to be pulling back equal and opposite. Otherwise, the cable's coming off the wall. And now if I have this X component up here, I've got to have an equal and opposite down here at A. Number one for equilibrium and number two... If I'm pulling up, I don't want to punch through this wall right here. So I've got to kind of push out to make sure that I'm not damaging damaging my wall. Okay, so equal and opposite, but also structurally, I'm pulling down. I've got to be pulling up. Okay, so we can we can start since we're new at this. We can start. Let's just sum forces in the x direction. They equal zero, and I see I have an ax minus TB cosine 25, and all of this has to equal zero. I can sum forces Y, okay, AY minus 4.66 kilonewtons minus 10 kilonewtons plus TB sine 25, all of this has to equal zero. So I have AY plus TB sine 25 equals 14.66 kilonewtons. So between the cable pulling up and the reaction at the wall, this, this beam is not going anywhere. But I have an AX, an AY, and a tension. So I have one, two, three unknowns, and only two equations. So now I need to take moments. When I pick where I'm going to take the moment, it's usually I want to get rid of some unknowns. So if I sum the moments at A, then I'm left with the unknown TB. If I wanted to sum the moments here at B, okay, I would be left with AX and AY. Well, that's two unknowns. I don't know how they're related. If I sum at A, I'm left with TB and oh, TB. So I have one unknown. So I'm going to do that. So let's sum the moments about A. And this time, because we're at a pin, there is no moment of A. It is free to rotate. There is no resisting moment. So let's come across, and I have negative 4.66 kilonewtons times, well, we know it's halfway the length of the 5 meters. However, A is offset. So its distance is 2.5, that's half, minus 0.12 meters, okay? Minus 10 kilonewtons. Okay, the whole length is 5 meters, minus the 1.5 on the right, minus the 0.12 of the offset pin at A. Okay, plus TB 
cosine 25. And its offset distance is if this whole thing is 0.5 meters deep. That means it's 0.25 meters from the centroid to the top. So this piece right here is 0.25 meters. And if I carry this vector all the way along, its perpendicular distance back down to A is 0.25. So I have positive 0.25 meters plus T, B, sine 25. We've got to pick up that Y component. And its full distance is, well, it's not quite 5 meters because A is offset slightly. So we have 5 meters minus 0.12 meters. And all of this equals zero. So we can solve here. We get 2.5 minus 0.12 times 4.66. And I get negative 11.0908 kilonewton meters. Okay, minus 10 times 5 minus 1.5 minus 0.12 multiply that out minus 33.8 kilonewton meters okay plus well these are both TB's and they only have one unknown so we can actually end up adding them so we're going to say plus TB of 25 cosine 0.25 times so I get point two two six five seven seven okay and then I have sine of twenty five five point one two minus times okay so we get plus two point zero six two three seven seven all of this equals zero so I'm going to take these that don't have my unknown, bring them over and add them together. So on the right, I'm going to have 44.8908 kilonewton meters. And on this side, I have TB, and then I'm going to add 0.226577 plus 2.062377, and I get 2.2889. Nine five four. Now we can multiply by the reciprocal, and I get my tension in cable B is nineteen point six one kilonewtons. Okay, that's the tension in my cable. So I like to go back up to my picture and kind of cross that out and put nineteen point six one kilonewtons. 19.61 kilonewtons, okay? I also have my AX equation. So I have 19.61 kilonewtons. So AX equals 19.61 kilonewtons cosine 25. AX equals 25 cosine times 17.77. Kilonewtons, positive, I assume it to the right, so I was correct. And I can go back here, and now that I know the tension here, I can rewrite this as AY equals 14.66 kilonewtons minus 19.61 kilonewtons sine of 25. Okay, so I have 14.66. 19.61 25 sine times minus and I get that AY equals 6.37 kilonewtons up. Okay, so I started off with summing AX and AY and then I came back up here and did my work in between and got my answers. I'll be honest, it's very hard to grade exams this way because we don't know what how you got these numbers and substituting. And you'll figure out, I can't start always with summing forces X and Y. I may have to start with a moment. And um, just start with your moment and then you can sum your forces X and Y. And it makes it a much easier uh, process because you're not having to 
look at so many unknown variables and freak out.